Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Mutat Capital Services Q4 FY24 earnings conference call hosted by Alara Securities Private Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing the star then zero on your touchdown phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Shweta Dattar from Elara Securities, Riot Limited. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Steve. On behalf of Elara Securities, we welcome you all to Q4 FI24 and FI24 earnings conference call of Masood Capital Services. From the esteemed management, we have with us today Mr. Matthew Smarko, CEO, and Mr. Ramandeep Gill, CFO. Without further ado, I hand over the call to Mr. Ramandeep Gill for opening remarks, post which we can open the floor for Q&A. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you so much, Sheta. A very good morning to all of you, and thank you so much for, for being on the call. So I'll start this uh, call. Uh, basically, the idea is to provide you uh, the uh, future earnings and as well as what happened exactly during the last financial year. So last financial year, we, uh, when we had started, we broadly had you know four four areas to cover. First one was the GMPA, wherein you know we started this uh, we started last financial year with a huge GMPA numbers. Then team in place. Then obviously you know we, we wanted to increase our AUM as well. And fourth most important thing was the tech. The objective was to reach to a phase wherein the, wherein the journey has to be upward from there. So we found very, you know, the different ways to increase the sales, to bring down the NPA, so as to keep ourselves alive and, and uh, stable in the market. And I personally feel we did a really good, uh, reasonable job, you know, uh, so, so, uh, so as to uh, reach our goals. Now I'll take you to the broad numbers and the way forward uh, for NPA When uh, When in last financial year, we acquired 1,74,178 new customers with remarks 11% growth year on year. Whereas the total sourcing has been increased by 9%, where we, uh, we did 1,438 crore of fresh sourcing during the last financial year. The, there are two, most, uh, two more important factors into that which will come into play. It's, it's basically, first one is the GNPA. We, did, we have been able to reduce our GNPA by 54%, which is basically a combination of two things. One, yes, we did our ARC sale of 235 crores in Q2. Second is basically the hardcore recovery of 70 CR, which we have done in the last financial year. The third thing is, we, as, a, as a company, and, and that, uh, we have seen in the last financial year as, as well, the company has a, has a uh, good practice of keeping a high PCR. So we we have uh, we have closed the last financial uh, financial year as well by keeping a PCR of 75 percent, therefore closing our NNP of NNP at 3.40 percent. The uh, best thing you know which happened to us since you know the first focus was the GNPA. We tried to analyze that you know when our case is becoming when our case uh, is becoming GNPA for the very first time. That is where the control, the entire control has been established, and we have been able to see uh, the very, very good results into that. We have been able to bring out that early stage NPA by 68%. And as, as we speak, we are having a DNP on that early stage is only 0.49 percentage. The company has recorded a profit after tax of 122 CR, uh, remarking a growth of 57% year on year. This also includes the uh, exceptional item of uh, provision reversal, which we have made two years back, uh, but recording a, recording a jump of 57% year on year. Whereas our return on asset has recorded a jump uh, by 71%, uh, therefore uh, we, uh, we reported ROA at 6.35%. The company is operating at a very healthy PRIR of 31.24% as of 31st of March 2024 whereas return on equity stood at 22.25%, and we have been able to de deliver an EPS of rupees 74.58. The uh, uh, total balance sheet size of the company stood at 2,3314 CR, whereas uh, the shareholder fund stood at 612 CR, and the total borrowings of the company stood at 1,661 CR, taking the total AGM to 2,018 CR. 
talking about the particular quarter on quarter, we did a number of 430 CR in the last quarter itself. We, uh, on that number, we have been able to acquire 45,667 new customers during the Q4, and then our uh, profitability stood at 11.06 CR for Q4. Our rating agencies have uh, have kept our rating as A plus uh, itself. Now the further evaluation will be done post the results will be out. As we said, you know the start of the financial year, we were having a DNPA, including the interest, was 22.09 percentage, which has been brought down to 10.17 percentage. You know, as we close the financial year, whereas NNPA was 4.46 percentage, which has been brought down to 3. Point Zero per percentage, despite the despite you no know, we at, at, at the start of the uh, financial year we did have a PCR of 88 percentage, which has been dropped down to 75 percentage, because you know since we uh, reduce our PCR, therefore you know there is no impact that you know that we have increased the PCR. That is the reason our NNP has gone down. A proper hard cash recovery has been done. Therefore our NNP we are reporting at 3.40 percentage. Talking about the year on year, we can see that last financial year we did 1,318 CR of sourcing. We marked a growth of 9% in the uh, in last financial year, wherein we did 1,438 CR. We also tried, you know, we also uh, framed one more uh, thing for uh, for the investor that since we did ARC of 235 CR, therefore we can see that there is a slight dip in the AUM by 4%. If we would not have done that, you know, there is a there uh, there would obviously be in the growth because our our uh, numbers have been higher as compared to the last to last financial year. We can see that there is a there is a jump on every aspect profitability, tax, and you know EPS of the company, and also we provided the comparison so that you know we can share this to the uh, shareholders and to the investors that what we did in the Q3 of last financial year vis a vis where are the numbers as of the Q4. Q3, since it, uh, it was seasonal time, we did a number of 478.89 CR. Q3, we did uh, 4, 4, uh, 4, sorry, Q4, we did uh, 430 CR. Yes, we can see that, you know, there is there is some sort of dip. You know, we said that we will be doing some 500, 550, 600 odd CR. But the only thing, you know, which hold us there is that we need to have, you know, settled team. And because of that, see, there, there are two parts to it. We can see that there, there was a dip in revenue because our co lending share was high and our NPS share was down. But that has been turned around over a period of time in Q3 and Q4 as well. And that too we are doing as of now. So that our total yield can be increased over a period of time. And that, and that we have seen in Q4 as well and uh, in Q1 as of now as well. We can also see that uh, we can uh, we can also see that the own funds of the company at the start of the financial year it was 489 CR, which has been increased to 612 CR approximately as we close the last financial year. The company has a debt to equity of four times at the start of the financial year, and without increasing the further funds, we know that you know we have been able to flow back the reserves and all. Therefore, our debt to equity is at 2.7 times, which is extremely healthy as we speak. The uh, EPS has also grown from 47.8 rupees to 74.6 rupees. Yes, we can say that there is one of charts, you know, which we have taken it back in the Q2 itself. One more, you know, uh, one more slide which I have re I have shown this to the investors as well that we have tried to show to the investors that, that about uh, the NPS and yield. We started this uh, uh, this year with a with a yield on the NPS and loan at 21.47%. That has gone down to 20.11% depending upon, you know, market and the sourcing which we are doing, you know, what what sort of customer base we wanted to, uh, we wanted to take. That helped us. Then we also provided, you know, yields on the corporate loan. Though the book size remain more or less the same, then we can also see that, that there is only 8-9 percentage of growth in that book. But yes, the yield has gone up there also. So as, you know, borrowing costs, we can say that, you know, the average MCLR, has been increased by 0.12 uh, percentage, whereas you know it has only impacted us 0.08 percent as we speak. The recoveries have been the strength of the company throughout the last financial year because we know that if nominator is not getting increased, you know through sales and all, we don't want it to have any impact on the on the new NPH on the fresh flows and roll forward of the company. The companies have been able to you know take uh, take uh, fundings or take NPH uh, recoveries. 
uh, uh, from 48% from the start of the financial year to, to 56% at the end of the financial year, which also helps us in saving you know more of cost towards recovery. And remaining uh, remaining recovery comes uh, from cash, which is which is approximately 44 percentage. So the cost of recovery, which was uh, five percent at the start of financial year, that uh, we that we have been able to bring it down to approximately four percent at the close at the at the close of the uh, financial year. Our corporate loan book uh, stood at 181.64 CR. Wherein we can see that there is only a marginal growth in that. That to you know, in order to support uh, our co-lenders or any other parties, wherein we really feel that you know, because we we really don't want to take chance into that. But because still we have a, our main focus still be two wheelers, used car, and used LC. The NNCA trend we have, we we must have seen that you know in Q2 as well we closed NNCS at 194.44 crore. Whereas we can see that you know even that as I said that even if the denominator is not getting increased, we need to focus on you know NNC so that cash flow of roll forward can be you know can be brought back. We closed our NNC at, at a precisely at 191.49 CR, and uh, out of that 143 crore pertains to my pre-COVID era, where, so, uh, on which the company will be taking a call. Uh, the uh, when 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 we say that you know when we talk about the portfolio analysis of the company, uh, last to last financial year, financial for 23, we we were at 58 percent in south, but now since we uh, in last financial year we decided to you know to go pan India, that 58 percent has become 44 percent in south, and uh, that uh, if we uh, if we talk about the coal lending business, coal lending business was 20 22 percent in. Uh, SY 23, sorry, sorry, in in uh, in Q3 of last uh, Q3 of last financial year, that has gone to 32 percent in Q4. Whereas as far as the concentration in East Northwest, it remains more or less the same for the company. Uh, talking about the standard portfolio of the company, 89.35 percent remains standard, and remaining 10.65 percent remains NPA for the company. In terms of the segment wise, yes, 11.24 percent comes uh, of the NPA comes from the two wheeler segment, and 5.46 uh, percent comes from the used car uh, as, as NPA. Talking about the coal lending, the last financial year we had five past, uh, five partners for coal lending, and one partner we added for uh, for BC. Wherein, if you talk about coal lending, we had uh, five partners which has a total share of 600 crore. Lastly, you know, uh, in last two months of the financial year, we also entered into the EV space as, uh, for the for the impact funding, and uh, therefore, you know, we have tied a coal lending partnership uh, with EV dot pin so as to so as to enter into the EV space as well and to understand as well that even if MCSL wants to go full flow, that what needs to be done. It has given us a great results as of now, and uh, from April onwards, we started our own EV funding as well. Uh, one BC, so total coal lending partnerships and BC partnerships exceeded 600 crore with uh, with zero NPA as we speak. We I have also provided uh, also said uh, at the start of the call that company has uh, the the policy of the company in terms of NPA it remains that that minimum PCR of 75 percent has to be provided, making sure that NNP of the company should be under the PCA norms as prescribed by the RBA RBI. Talking about uh, one more update uh, for the company, wherein uh, company did one ARC sale uh, through following a uh, security receipt method, wherein you know at Q2 end we had a security receipt of uh, receipt of 102.22 CR. The, those security receipts now standing at a balance of only 60 uh, 63 CR, which which uh, which provides that you know that yes, even if the case have been sold to NPAs and all. But yes, the uh, the uh, organization is equally focused. That yes, this security receipt balance has to go down, and it's going down extremely well. Uh, uh, and there is no impairment has been provided in the book as per the rating agencies are concerned as of 31st of March. Talking about the funding, for the, uh, talking about the uh, funding of the company. First, we'll talk about you know shareholding pattern. Promoters and promoter group still holding 62.62% in the company, whereas retail is holding 28.14%. The remaining has been, you know, segregated between FIS, NRIs, other corporate bodies. We, in last financial year, 
though our borrowing cost we might we can say that it's 9.80 percentage as an average cost of funding but in last financial year we raised somewhere we raised 754.49 crr which is a combination of ncd of 200 crore fresh working capital demand of 170 crore cp of 241 crore and a small chunk of ptc of 144 crore at a borrowing cost of 9.67 percentage then also talking about the update on the fixed deposit which i gave a glimpse in q3 as well that yes we have we have tried to increase we have increased the rate so as to remain competitive in the market in q4 we have seen the results as well our deposit book has started getting growing now we have been able to uh, raise 6 uh, crore as an additional funding and we have been able to renew 7 uh, crore of fixed deposit during the last quarter itself so now we have seen that deposit uh, book we have also hired a fresh team for uh, for fixed deposit in the q4 itself wherein we wanted to see a result in this uh, in this uh, in this financial year and the quarters to come talking about the public concentration of the company now we uh, working capital demand loan provides us 62% of the funding where 25% comes from ncd and mld of the company the securitization has been dropped down to 20% 20% as of now and the remaining uh, concentration is of 2% which comes from my fixed deposits and other things so uh, this aspect and uh, third thing you know which i really wanted to update uh, it as far as the provisioning is concerned the company is still carry is still carrying you know uh, an overlay of 60 cr which uh, which we know that you know there is a pre covid portfolio too which uh, for which we need to take a call as far as ecl to irx is concerned the company is carrying 21 cr as an additional provision of uh, uh, as an additional provision combining with phase 1 2 and 3 of the company this excludes the management overlay which the company is having on which we will take the call as and when uh, the company will be taking a call on the pre- uh, previous portfolio so those are the broad numbers from my side now i'll just hand over the call to to the ceo of the company so that he can take you through uh, take you through the business and the way forward thank you sir thank you ramandeep good morning all thank you so much for joining the call once again it's a pleasure connecting with you uh, so i think raman has already uh, briefed you on the numbers uh, i'll just take you through the journey a bit so uh, <coughs> first quarter of last year when i had taken over and the new management had had come we had uh, several challenges which was one the team was not there uh, the npa was high uh, collection team was just getting set uh, so in fact over the course of the year in all the calls we've been uh, uh, updating you the progress that we made today we are uh, very proud to say that the entire team is in place uh, we managed to uh, get all the pick all the right boxes in terms of uh, getting all good people from the market changing our new los Uh, to be competitive today are uh, we are able to give approvals like the uh, similar to the best in the industry 5 minute approvals uh, half an hour to 45 minutes disbursement so all those uh, problems are behind us now and uh, we have started seeing results of that so in fact uh, if you look at the overall disbursement of 1437 crores of last year the first quarter was only 200 crores and uh, second quarter was also s- s- slow at about 360 crores 64% of the total disbursement happened in the second half of the year of course q3 was uh, is generally a good good time for the industry because of uh, the festive season in north and west uh, so we also uh, gained on that q4 is the time when we implemented our new los and therefore uh december and january we uh, took a slight hit but then we started recovering today we are uh, as we speak uh, we are already at 25% of uh, what we did in the whole of last year so uh, the plan for this year or first half of the year is to cover up whatever we have done in the whole of last year to cover up uh, in, in by september that is on the business done by mcsl alone coal ending of course uh, moves at their own pace so Uh, as of now uh, coal ending i am not uh, talking about i am talking about whatever mcsl team did uh, on its own for the whole year we will cover up by september uh, that's the plan and that's how we are poised and the start has been extremely good for us in april and uh, the uh, half of may 
uh, all other uh, we've invested in a lot in technology in data uh, analytics so today we have a business intelligence and strategy team we have our uh, uh, scorecards for collection where we predict uh, the probability of bounds the pre delinquency scorecard there are uh, you know post delinquency scorecards of which are the customers who, who are the probability of roll, roll back and who are the probable roll forward so collection uh, strategy team put in place and the entire uh, collection allocation happens based on the uh, outcome of the scorecard uh, again uh, we have brought in data science into our origination as well so we have <coughs> we have now uh, a scorecard to decide the uh, approval rate also during the course of the year we also want to move into a risk based pricing based on the scorecard that we have not implemented yet but we sometime during the year we will also go into a risk based pricing where we will be able to price the better profile customers at uh, say a lower price and uh, or give benefit of the price to the better quality the customers and of course charge uh, higher from the higher risk customer so that is the direction which we will get into a uh, very comforting factor on our uh, portfolio uh, distribution is that 98% of the portfolio that we built last year are, are customers who have their own house so that's a huge comfort in the two wheeler segment i think that would be uh, compared to the best in the industry or maybe the best also because Uh, that high level of own house book means that our collection efforts and everything will be much more easier and the uh, you know the customers would be traceable another factor is that uh, the vehicle models which have a very high retail value or relatively very high retail value which is hero and uh, honda these two oems contribute to 70% of our portfolio and uh, the next uh, so these two are the uh, Uh, OEMs who have a good, uh, whose products have a good resale value, and the next one is TVS, and that has about 14% share. So between these three OEMs, we are uh, about 85% of our entire portfolio is covered. Also on the uh, distribution in terms of credit bureau scores, uh, the, the uh, what we call as uh, near prime or slightly below prime. portfolio contributes to only about 11% of the overall portfolio and uh, everything else is on the prime or uh, super prime category so overall the portfolio has uh, stood up very well the quality is the, that we are incrementally acquiring is very good and uh, the momentum has picked up so we are extremely bullish on the current year thank you thank you we will now begin the question and answer session if anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handset while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles The first question is from the line of Shivam Agarwal from Equitry Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Uh, thank you so much for taking my question. Uh, is my is am I really audible? Yes, yeah, Shivam. Very good. Uh, so actually, uh, so actually, I have a couple of questions. Uh, first, I missed out on the dealership side. Like uh, the seventy percent dealership comprises of Honda and second company with you. Hero and Honda, uh, but sir, uh, like Hero, uh, the major financing comes from uh, Hero Fincorp, and it also uh, uh, has contact with even small finance banks. So, like uh, the major source of financing for Hero was uh, then what I say, what I uh, heard or what I read about. So, what do what do you have take on this? Yeah. Like, I didn't understand the question. I I am saying that of the 1.74 lakh customers. that we acquired last year okay the 43% of that constitute is constituted by uh, uh, models of hero okay 
uh and sir what is the update updates on the sbu side like uh we are uh, doing the sbus of uh, our products now to wheeler then use the vehicle so tell updates on that i didn't understand the question uh so what are the uh, we are like uh, making sbus of our products like uh, two wheeler different as you use ah, okay. different sbu SBU, yeah, yeah, yeah. So two wheeler uh, continues to be our bigger SBU. So last year, bulk of the business came in two wheeler, but we uh, started uh, the used car business last year. We did about 25, 30 crores of uh, disbursement in used car, and CV we started this month. So CV yes. we disbursed our first loan this month. So today we have uh, six products. Uh, two wheeler, of course, is the uh, biggest chunk. But this year, towards the end of the year, we will have a good size, a good part of the business coming from used car and CV also. Apart from that, we have a product called loyalty loan, which is a, a personal loan. आपन जा किसी से बोले था हाँ, क्या व्यक्ति ने आपका कॉल होल्ड वेल खेला है? कृपया लाइन में रहा. The person you are speaking with has put your call on hold. Please stay on the line. आप जिस व्यक्ति से बात कर रहे हैं, उसने आपकी कॉल को होल्ड पे रखा है. कृपया Uh, of two wheeler or any other product and uh, th- that is not actually a personal loan it's seen as a personal loan but the uh, asset continues to be uh, the security because noc is not issued to those customers uh, and we have our retail liability also so we have okay. these uh, six products that we will have from this year uh, and sir uh, i'll i'll get costs here direct for 10000 eum we didn't uh, Three to four years. So, what is the breakup for that? So, this year we are targeting an AUM of three three uh, thousand crores. And uh, hello, by yes, twenty four we are twenty four we are targeting an AUM of three thousand crores. And uh, by twenty twenty uh, five March twenty five AUM will be three thousand crores, and by twenty six we will hit five thousand crores. Uh, and so the major contribution would be from two wheeler vehicle only two wheeler will continue to be about 60 65% okay sir thank you thank you before we take the next question we would like to remind participants that you may press star and one to ask a question the next question is from the line of rishikesh from robo capital please go ahead Yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, so my first question is with regards to the yields. Uh, what was the uh, yield for quarter four? So hi. So first question is, uh, as I said, you know, the blended yield comes at seventeen point five two percent. When I say blended yield, it's basically a yield which is a combination of my co-lending and the combination of my mutual capital in-house business. Okay, so uh, uh, you know, when compared to last year, where we used to be around nineteen point four, nineteen point five percent. So, what's the plan? How are we looking to go back to those levels, and how would that happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, thank you so much for asking this question. I would just like to answer this question in a very structured manner. Yes, last financial year. First of all, when we compare it to something with the last financial year, yes, last financial year we just. uh enter into a business called co lending where you know we spent approximately 3 to 4 months in uh, in co lending whereas uh, in this financial year uh, for, for, uh, for the financial year for which we are uh, presenting the results the co lending had a had a chunk for the entire year therefore the impact with co lending yield uh, you know brought uh, co lending has brought down our yield uh, by uh, by 2 to 1.5% because we have been operating with co lending from last year or so but one good thing with that is you know wherein i would i would add is that the site creating 600 pr of co lending business we had zero nt as of now which is quite good because that also helps us in saving our you know 
cost of uh, cost of opex and our ecl also have been saved because of that third thing is where where we will be in terms of you know as i said at the start of the call itself the focus is yes on the yield uh, there are two focuses yes mta will always remain with the uh, remain the focus of the company but still there are two main focuses one yes we are working we have already started working on the yield if you see last financial year q1 we we have mcs and have done somewhere around 40 crr a month which has now been increased to 85 crr a month from our own business right so we try to contain that yes uh, we we try to contain the business you know which we are uh, receiving from the outside but uh, but, but at, at the same time we just want mcs and business to grow higher and higher so that a proper yield can be matched up which we can see at the uh, in next you know two to six weeks from now that we yes in q1 what was the yield of the company in last financial year and q1 what the yield now because of the fact that you know we have been able to almost multiplied our uh, mps and business by two times every month in this quarter as well and this is happening from last three to four months from now which is a good positive sign for the company Okay, so uh, uh, how would that you know uh, impact the yields going ahead? Would we can we see from Q yeah. one yeah. a trajectory towards you know old yields or what would be a target yields for now then? So I'll I'll tell you the for for example uh, I'll just uh, uh, answer this that now when I say our blended yield is seventeen point five six percent that will obviously go uh, grow comparing with quarter stand alone. right because we know we know, uh, we know that hypothetically say if i do 4 uh, 430 cr in this quarter right of that 430 cr i know that you know 300 plus cr will come only from the mcsl which was not the case in the q1 of the uh, of the last quarter where in out of 200 cr we know that you know 100 cr came from mcsl remaining from the co lending so that 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 is basically impacted the yield Wherein, wherein we know that you know total revenue of the company from MCSL yield, we will be we will be having some twenty two odd percent, whereas from co lending we will be having some fifteen uh, odd percentage of yield. So that is something you know which uh, which will not be the case for the company from now onwards because we know that you know that that uh, majority of the business is come only uh, is coming only from the MCSL route itself, which is on a higher yield. Sir, I hope I'm able to answer somewhat of your question. So, uh, can you just tell me the increment and disbursement? I'll add to that. Uh, I'll just add to what Raman said. Uh, we on our own portfolio, about four percent is from tier one cities. About twenty percent, twenty-eight percent comes from uh, tier two cities, and sixty-eight percent of our business is in tier three and tier four cities. Where we get a much better pricing, so we do upwards of 23 percent there. Okay, and that is what is impacting. Uh, that is what is a, a positive on our yield. Now, when the own share contribution will increase, last year the contribution of uh, MPSL to uh, your co-lending was 50-50, and that's what brought down because co-lending happens at a typically lower yield. So that is what pulled down our yield. But this year the co. Uh, Ratio of uh, co-lending to MCSL own book would be 75-25 at best. So that will automatically impact the yield. Plus, our continued focus on cities, tier three and tier four cities, will help us increase the yield. Okay, so co-lending we are still uh, uh, lending at 16 percent yield. Yeah, co-lending uh, we have different deals with different partners. But as a blended, based on the, based on the volumes that they have committed, we have different rates with different partners. Okay, and what would be the yields for our own book then? It would be twenty-two percent for the own book. Okay. Okay. Okay, and uh, so in that case, so the whatever incremental disbursements that we make for this year, uh, at, at what yields would we be making that blended yields? If you could please share. So, if you ask me, as as you know, our CEO has said, seventy five percent would be at the NPSL uh, NPSL side that we will be doing. So, blended yield would be somewhere that will come close to twenty or odd percent, including my processing fee and everything. Twenty percent is something which I am expecting as a blended yield for the whole year. Okay, 
okay and this and, is uh, from the uh, from the q1 itself what yeah. it what it and what is our disbursement target for fi25 as well as fi26 so i when you for fi25 is concerned we are projecting uh, from so so there, so there are three parts to it which we have uh, sorry uh, i'll say that you know first in is two wheeler we we will be targeting somewhere around you know 1100 cr of fixed disbursement for my used car i will be having some 150 cr of my uh, new, new disbursement we also started some we also started used lcd wherein you know i am uh, expecting a target of 160 cr wherein we we have planned we have you know framed our b plan uh, accordingly from our alternate channel that is you know the uh, funding that that is the business which we are taking uh, from msl wherein you know we uh, we uh, we do uh, synergy with mukut think of wherein we are expecting a business of somewhere around 168 crore profit loan book will remain more or less the same there is there will be only 5% jump uh, from the existing one and co lending we are expecting somewhere around you know 400 to 500 cr uh, during the next year during the financial year okay okay got it thank you very much thank you sir thank you participants who wish to ask a question may press star and 1 the next question is from the line of kish kishit verma from rest assured wealth advisor please go ahead Uh, hello sir good afternoon thanks for giving me a chance i had a uh, query regarding our co lending business model number one as mentioned uh, that our npas as of now is zero in the co lending model so doesn't it make more sense for the management to actually increase the co lending part because their underwriting seems to be better than our own underwriting or the npas are much higher what would be your feedback on the same no no so uh, that's the balanced uh, view that we will take so we don't want to be an organization which is only dependent on co lending so we want to continue our business because yields are fairly larger uh, so we will continue to build our own book uh, secondly co lending is always a function of uh, striking the right partnerships uh, and there are always rate challenges because there are larger players who can come and undercut the rate and then they uh, start diverting business there so there is a certain amount of uncertainty also which we don't want so our our business model would continue to be focus on our own business and we will accept uh, co lending partners on their merit so we were never saying no to them we will continue to focus on that as a business because as you rightly mentioned there is a positive uh, side on uh, for recall the npa and stuff like that but we will continue to build our own book uh, so just a follow up question there were uh, articles in the paper mentioning that there was some issue with the indirect tax department regarding the coal and mining model so is there any update on that from the gst department not yet we have not received any update on that but uh, for us uh, uh, as of now it's not So whenever we will having this, uh, any update on this, we'll update the list accordingly. Okay, so that would be something. Okay, so the book capsule as of now, yeah. Thank you. A reminder to all participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. Ladies and gentlemen who wish to ask a question may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Bhargav, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, my question is, uh, is to Mr. Sujeev. Uh, actually, I have been an investor for the last three years. So, the last two quarters after you have come in. So, if I'm not wrong, in Q2 con call, uh, you have guided for uh, 600 CR of disbursement, and it ended at a 468, 469 like that. I mean, uh, after the Q3 call, you said that uh, this time uh, we'll definitely do the disbursement of 600 CR. But uh, if I look at the, if you look at it, it is not even 400 CR. So, what is the guidance for it? Because continuously, even in the last year, uh, they have guided for 2,700 for the full year closing, but uh, it didn't end up. It ended up in the same range. 
so how would you say that uh, you are going to achieve the 3000 because for the last quarter or last year every time you are giving targets and you are unable to achieve it okay i want to thank you for the question let me clarify on that uh, yes we did give a guidance on 600 posts for q4 but that is the time when i as i mentioned in my opening remarks that in december we changed our loa to from the old to new that's a much more robust loa which can give us help us give a decision in 5 minutes or disbursement in half an hour to 45 minutes as against earlier which we were taking 24 hours to give a decision and when you implement a new system that is a major major change in the life of a organization and we had initial we took one and a half months to two months to for the system to stay and that is where we missed out on the business but that was a conscious call because that was at some stage we had to do it and that was of course an investment for the future and on the uh, q3 guidance again that was on the seasonality factor of uh, november that time we had not implemented we purposely postponed our software was ready but uh, by taking feedback from the uh, field we decided to uh, uh, postpone the implementation because we did not want to want the uh, disruption in business because of that q3 thing that was the reason why we missed out on our uh, guidance that we had given but definitely uh, we are committed towards the numbers that we are uh, saying and this year you will definitely see this quarter you will see the numbers coming in because today all it's a well oiled machine now we we are doing as i as i again mentioned in our opening remark as as we speak we are already at 25% of what we disbursed uh, through mcsl own business in the whole of last year so our uh, commitment is to uh, complete the entire figure that we did whole of last year by september and that we will achieve and what is the guidance for the this quarter because already uh, this is march uh, for this is may and in rest at least only one month left for the quarter what is the disbursement uh, that you, you are going to achieve for this quarter we have more of this all 400 crores we will do that will be 100% growth over q1 of last year no don't compare it with q1 because anyway out of the 400 300 will come back towards in the decrease in the portfolio because it's a two wheeler so only 100 crore am will increase from 2020 to 2120 to so by end of the quarter yes sir that's right and uh, uh, how do you see the other uh, divisions uh, contribute because uh, you have hired everything is done right in other parts because yeah. the cd business is going outside everything is going on and what is the part on the uh, 10% uh, gross and pure and how are you going to decrease it because uh, i see i don't uh, see a significant collapse in the last two quarters as well so collection has definitely improved in the last uh, two quarters and last year we actually brought down the npa not just the percentage actually brought down the quantum of npa by about 65 crores uh, from uh, other than the arc this i am talking about uh, without including the arc and uh, uh, what was the second question this is on the npa and the second one is the contribution of the other parameter so apart from covid ah, sorry on the other parameter so what will really impact our growth in aum is the kicking of the new car and uh, uh, sorry used car and used lcv business because they are fairly larger tickets the average ticket size there is 5 lakh and the average turnover is about 48 to 60 months the run off would be much smaller than lower than the two wheeler business and uh, that will whatever we disperse there should largely contribute to the aum as well so the as it is start from this this quarter itself like q1 uh, two car uh, in q1 would be uh, not that much because it is picking up of course it will be maybe in q1 uh, we should do whatever we did in the whole of last year for car but that is it about it but it will not be significant but both car and uh, lcv will start contributing really big in uh, h2 from the august september both these businesses will be kicking and last time you said that you are going to do a arp transaction for the rest of the there is some more part of it and you said you will think about it in the q1 so any update on the arp 
contemplating. We have not taken a firm decision and we are still contemplating. But yeah, I missed one question. You were saying on the guidance on the NPA, this year, by the end of this year, we will bring it down to 6% GNPA. So you are you are guiding for the whole year, 3,000 crore AM and 6% gross NPA. Yes, yes. Even if you do the ERP transaction, if you exclude that also, it should be in the range, right? 3,000 AM and 6% gross. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's it from my side. Hope you will uh, do what you are guiding. Sure, we will definitely try to meet all those expectations. Because we have been investors for the last three years, we have not seen any return. Rather, we lost thank the other We really thank you for your, uh, you know, patronage. We really appreciate that. And we'll, we'll so hope you will uh, reward us with the return by contribution. Yes, yes. Surely. Thank you. Thank you very much. For the you may press star and one to ask the question. Next question is from Line of Shetaj Varma from Rest Assured Wealth Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, once more. I just had a follow-up question. Uh, we had uh, seen in the last couple of financial year RBI taking a certain crackdown on unsecured loans and risking uh, and increasing the risk weights. Seeing the two-wheeler industry, the NPA ratios are almost at the same level before RBI took a crackdown on the unsecured lending uh, you know, business. Are we also as a management feeling that RBI may someday increase the risk weights for our two-wheeler portfolio? What is your feedback on the same? I think that is not a question for us to answer. Uh, but two-wheeler is a secured portfolio. We are able to uh, repossess the asset wherever there is a default, and we are able to recover substantial amount of money through that process. So I don't think, uh, but I am, it's not for me to answer that. Uh, sir, just one more question. If there is an interest rate cut in the future, say in the coming one or two years, uh, how does that help us in our NIM expansion, or do we have to pass back all the gains to the borrowers in our segment of two wheeler? Interest rate cut, uh, you meant from RBI repo rate cut? Uh, yes, sir, from RBI side. So our borrowing yeah, also should go down ideally, I believe. Repo rate cut will definitely uh, help us as a uh, company because uh, last year there's been a increase in MCSR, M MCLR and therefore uh, we also saw, saw a correspond, but we, we were able to ma maintain our borrowing rates fairly uh, at the same level by, uh, you know, negotiating well with the bankers. Also our uh, financials have improved in uh, March 24 over March 23, so that also will help us uh, go for a better rates, bargain a better rates from our financials. So all that has been a positive, and uh, if there is a rate cut, then of course it is going to uh, benefit us. As I mentioned earlier, since we operate in tier three, tier four, our rates remain uh, fairly uh, constant on the on the lending side. And sir, other than two wheeler business, are we looking at co lending in the other segments and your used commercial vehicle and other segments? Wherever there is an opportunity to do co lending, we will definitely do that. Okay, sir. That's it from my side. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Brian of Cage from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Um, yeah, hi. Thank you for the follow-up. Uh, my question is with regards to the AUM contribution. Uh, we have given a target of 3,000 because of AUM in FI25 and 5,000 or FI26. What would be the contribution of used car and LCG uh, for the same? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I take. Yeah, yeah. So uh, hi, hi, Rishikesh. So what we are expecting uh, for this financial year, as which we are as of now, we are expecting from used car, we are expecting a number of somewhere around 150 to 160 RCR, whereas uh, from uh, from LCV as well, we are expecting the same number. Since used car, we we have we already have a team, you know, that is there in the place from last you know four to five months. LCV team has just been you know uh, in the two capital from last two months itself, and we are expecting these numbers. Though the average ticket size is extremely high in in this businesses, right? So we are expecting in the next financial year, we are expecting some 350 crore from the used car and some 400 odd CR from the LCV. That 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 is what uh, that is what you know. Uh, 
we uh, we have taken as our number you know so business side obviously higher number has come but we have taken only 70 75% of it uh, while giving the expectation to the shareholders or investors okay and this is aui number right uh, so i tried to say specific number okay disbursement disbursement during the year okay. Okay. And that too, if we if we talk about AGM of that also, you know, since these products last for four to six years, four five years, right? So there will not be much uh, reduction as compared to the two wheelers which we see, wherein you know one vessel also said that you know even if you do 400 CR, we'll be seeing some 300 CR of you know uh, repayment, which is right. But you know in terms of LCV and use car, that is the sole objective too. That you know we want to have a product there wherein you know. which can where in repayments are not as fast as two wheelers are concerned because you know when we do 1400 cr a year and that too you know when we growing a book by only 8 9% where in it will be same number in used car and lcd as well it will it will you know take a good jump uh, to the entire aim of the company okay okay and um, what what is the targeted uh, opex growth for fi25 and fi26 And uh, what would be our credit cost guidance for FI25 and 26? Okay, so first of all, I'll take uh, the cost of credit since uh, for two wheeler is concerned, as uh, CEO said that the maximum GNP which we are expecting is six uh, percent, uh, including everything. Wherein you know we are expecting the same ECL to follow, uh, wherein uh, we are providing some stage to uh, say uh, say CEO said some forty two point two two percentage. And uh, yes, uh, for used car and LCV, since these are new products, wherein we are not expecting much of you know that kind of you know uh, bad repayments into that. And uh, since we have industry exports too, we are expecting some you know to to bring uh, an overall ECL of somewhere around 0.6 to 0.75 percent on these two products. That is one. Second, you know, uh, talking uh, talking about the opex of the company, uh, one thing is for sure that you know. whatever cost that that we have to observe you know we have already taken in the last financial year the hiring has been done everything has been done only the field staff hiring that that to for lcv is remaining other than that you know the opex will remain same more or less as we have reported in the last financial year as well okay so how would opex grow for next two financial years could you indicate uh, would it be fair to say around 10 12 15 percent something range if you could give no no that that would be on the hand side because as i said you know the team and everything has been set uh, for a book of uh, approximately 5 5000 or cr wherein we we have set at our entire team only growth we can see that you know uh, wherein we can see some uh, some uh, on those there in lcv and then there is there are chunks which will be coming in our uh, used car business as well so these are the two two businesses to grow I can fairly say, uh, fairly say that some six to eight percent of the growth which I am expecting in this financial year. That's it. For next financial year, we can project the same number. Got it. Got it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next question is on line of Ashwam Agarwal from Equity Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Go ahead, Ashwam. Uh, so actually, I have a follow-up question. Uh, so how we are approaching for uh, actually is the remark of uh, on the two-wheeler segment. Sorry, uh, EV segment. So how we are approaching for electric two-wheeler business, and what are the numbers we, if you can share about about this year? Matthew, sir, you want to take this? to uh, two wheeler as cfo mentioned uh, for ev as cfo mentioned during his opening thing we have got into a tie up with uh, greaves ev fin and uh, there we do exclusive uh, two wheelers sorry ev uh, electric two wheelers with us they contribute about uh, close to 20 crores a month with us other than that so as of now our uh, ev percentage is only 1% of my book or last years uh disbursement 1% was my contribution that will go up to about 5% 4 to 5% because we are also starting uh, electric three wheeler financing to one of our partners our co-lending mm-hmm. partners so all these put together this should jump up to about 4 to 5% of the book okay sir thank you yeah thank you next question is from line of bargov individual investor please go ahead 
సార్ నేను అప్డేట్ ఆన్ ద పర్సనల్ లోన్ బికాస్ సిక్స్ మంత్స్ బ్యాక్ యూ సైడ్ అపార్ట్ ఫ్రమ్ ద యూజర్ కార్ అండ్ కమర్షియల్ వెహికల్స్ యూ హోడ్ ఆల్సో వెంచర్ ఇన్ టు ద పర్సనల్ లోన్ సో అండర్స్టాండ్ యూ లైక్ సమన్ ఆస్కడ్ యూ యూ సైడ్ వీ ఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు గివ్ టు ద ఎగ్జిస్టింగ్ పర్సన్ సమ్ లోన్ సో వితౌట్ దాట్ ఆర్ యూ గోయింగ్ ఫుల్లీ ఆన్ ఎ పర్సనల్ లోన్ బేసిస్ we have uh, our partner with whom we will be starting but that will not be a very significant uh, contribution whereas well, somebody else was asking earlier rbi has also brought in some norms on uh, higher risk weightage etc etc but yes you are right we are given a guidance and that we will start you know, most probably in q1 we will start that disbursement but our larger focus will be on uh, our existing base who have a proven track record with us so how much would that be even on a annualized basis would that be more than 500 year or less than that no maybe the for the whole year we would look at say uh, about 100 crores of disbursement overall okay and a uh, small request from our side because uh, uh, mutut uh, microfinance is also there right which is also recently listed so over there as it is this is also part of mutut or oh, there they give uh, in a presentation itself they are giving how much is the guide how much is their guidance and in the next uh, box they are giving how much we have achieved guidance was is achievement they are giving in this uh, presentation itself only so we would request in your presentation also to give that because and they are clearly guiding how much we have guided in the call and how much we have delivered and the next slide they are giving how much is the next year guidance and quarter on quarter they are giving like this so we would request you to also go with that thank you so much for your feedback sir we will feedback taken and we will start giving it that way yeah. okay thank you very much as there are no further questions i will now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments so uh, thank you very much yeah. thank you it was really nice engaging with you once again and uh, thank you so much for the questions that you uh, put to us on various aspects and uh, let me assure you on behalf of the management that we stand committed to the uh, to continuing to you know add value to the all our shareholders we will uh, continue to work hard towards achieving the numbers that we have uh, committed to you uh, yeah thank you so much thank you very much on behalf of Samaj Jhanwar just yeah i'll just start and just start with thank you so much in this you know last financial year wherein we have seen uh, we have seen some you know up and down as well but you know one thing which was very sure from all of us that you know that we have we had worked as a team and you know uh, we we have been able to scale up uh, ship throughout the financial year yes we you know we have been able to fight with all odds you know in terms of npa side sales side the business side 100% i'm i'm assuring you that you know we will be providing you the result right from the q1 itself wherein you know i am i'm not afraid and and i'm making this statement because of the feedback because now i also feel that there, there is a need you know for the investors to have you know good ro and roe and as mr bhargav has said in the statement as well yes you know people are trusting us you know they are uh, they are making investors uh, they, they are making investments on us from last two years or so it's high time to you know to provide the uh, returns the team have been set now and i'm extremely you know sure that we will be able to deliver the results right from this quarter as well last financial it was extremely good for us also because we have not though although we have not grown much it the, uh, the growth was only 8 9% still we have been able to sail our ship for the financial year and thank you so much investors for trusting us for you know for uh, for investing us and, and 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 having a faith on us for the last financial year we expect the same faith in this financial year as well thank you Thank you very much. On behalf of Elara Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for jo- joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.